So now I want to talk in a little bit more detail about the combinators inside of Reason. Combinators are really fantastic devices for just combining multiple instruments and effects devices all together, but they also have some advanced functionality that enables you to map and customize the interface on the plugin. So that way you can easily control everything and get super advanced with the way that you're adjusting the various components of the software. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and load in a combinator. We can either do so from the browser or we can do so by just right clicking and going down to the utilities plugins. I'll just go ahead and go to my browser, go to utilities and drag and drop in a combinator. Then you see this main combinator interface. Basically this gives you a bin that you can load various different things into. So let's take a synthesizer. Let's go ahead and load that maybe grab some sort of effect. Let's do a reverb effect, drag and drop that in, adjust the dry wet so it's not quite as intense. And then all that together, I can go ahead and just fold it and it gives me a very nice and organized interface. So a lot of times I'll actually just use these to help organize a session. It just keeps everything inside of the rack way more organized. And you can also see over here in the sequencer, just gives me one sequencer lane for my combinator. So it just makes everything a lot more organized. So I definitely recommend trying that out whenever you're working on larger sessions. Just so everything's not like all out in the rack by itself, this just keeps everything a little bit more organized. So you have the option to bypass or turn them on or off just like you do with the effects devices. You can rename it by double clicking in this and typing in a name, or you can go over here and mess around with the load and save functionality. So if you hit the browser, you get all sorts of cool combinator presets. You can go to factory library, combinator presets. There's a bunch of cool stuff in here. You can even load in custom user presets as well. There's a bunch of really interesting things on Reason Studio's website, so you can always mess around with those too. All you have to do to load those is just double click on one of these, pick one you like, drag and drop it on, then you'll get a totally new combinator preset that has lots of different things inside of it, and then you can mess around with those and create different musical sequences for your tracks. I'm going to go ahead and undo that so we just get our blank combinator here. Hit that arrow to basically open everything up. Let's talk a little bit more about this interface. So the cool thing is we have this mixer here at the top. If we open this up, you could see that my first instrument device is plugged into inputs one and two. So it's coming off the spring reverb down here at the bottom. And if we flip this around, you could see that we have an input one and two. And then we also have this main volume output as well. So this is really great for layering multiple things together. So let's say we had that synthesizer and then also had a radical piano. Just to get some piano sounds all loaded in as well. We hit tab, it's now automatically routing to the secondary input on this combinator's mixer. And then we can blend that in with our sound, maybe turn that volume down a little bit. You get a weird hybrid between a synthesizer and a piano. Turn that up maybe. So this enables us to quickly layer everything together. And the cool thing is it's actually all just contained within one sequencer lane. So if I was to go in and sequence up this MIDI clip, let's say I just added a singular note. I play that back. It's gonna play both my synthesizer and my piano because they're in one singular combinator. So these are really great for layering things together and a lot of fun because you can make some really advanced sounds rather easily just by layering in multiple instruments into the same combinator. And additionally, you have pitch and modulation controls that correspond to the pitch and modulation controls on these synthesizers. You can see right here we have a pitch bend and then I believe we have pitch bend on here as well even though there's not an interface for it. But if I move this upwards, you can see that it's all mapped to that pitch control. So I'm basically moving this and it's moving this one as well. The same with that modulation control. That makes it really easy to control everything simultaneously. So if you want to adjust the pitch of all of your instruments into a pitch bend, you can map these parameters inside your sequencer and then you can create those modulations. Another way to take multiple instrument devices or an instrument in effect and create a new combinator out of them is to basically create them inside of your racks. Let me just go ahead and delete these really quickly. And let's say that we had that Europa preset and also that reverb as well. So basically say the same preset here. Let's go ahead and turn the dry wet down. And then what I'm gonna do is all I have to do is hold shift as I select them. So I have this selected, hold shift, select this. Now both devices are selected. I will right click on it and hit combine. And that will make a new combinator preset. Now everything is inside of the combinator and it's routed up to its own mixer channel. If I wanted to split this into its own individual devices like it was previously, I could right click on the combinator and hit uncombine, and it'll put everything back outside of the combinator as it was previously. A super handy feature to be aware of, so if you're not loading everything into the combinators by default, you can easily create combinators just by hitting combine. Now, one thing that I think is helpful to use whenever you're creating more complicated effects routing, so even though we have this mixer here at the top, I actually like to have a little bit more control of everything. 
So usually whenever I use combinators, I load in the utility plugin. We take this utility plugin and then I can route that into inputs one and two. And then that gives me some knobs up here at the top where I can kind of see each individual instrument device. I could take this output, plug it in here. Let's say I had a radical piano. Go ahead and grab the radical piano again. Take the audio output, wrap that into the mixer. And then that gives me the ability to kind of quickly see everything and adjust my levels here. But you do have this mixer if you'd like to use it. This is just a carryover from some of my earlier recent workflows, and I still like to work this way because I just find it a little bit easier just because it gives you some more finite control over the volume of everything. But you don't have to do things that way. It's just something helpful to be aware of. And I'll just go ahead and reset those volumes by holding Command or Control and just clicking on those parameters. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the mapping features that are available within the Combinator. Because as you probably have noticed, there's these controls along the top, which by default don't do anything. But once you start mapping these to different parameters on your software, it can get very interesting. So let's go ahead and just take this control number one and map this to the volume of this piano. I'll go ahead and mute my synthesizer device so that way I can't hear the synth and I can only hear that piano. Let's test that out real quick, just play everything. So we can just hear our piano. And then in order to edit this, I'm gonna go up to the editor. I'm gonna click on this. Then it's gonna give me this interface. Now there's a lot of advanced controls here, so don't worry too much about all of them. It's definitely worth kind of going through and exploring them as you become more advanced to your reason workflows, but this is not something you should be too concerned about whenever you're getting started. So if, if some of these parameters look a little bit foreign to you, don't worry. You can always start messing around with them a bit later once you become more comfortable with the reason software. So let's go ahead and map that volume control. I'll go ahead and click on my piano here from that devices dropdown. I'm gonna hit source. I want to have that be control one, which is that knob. And I want that to target a specific section on my device. I want that to be the volume. So I'm going to click on this drop down. And this is now selected the American Pop Piano down here. We're telling control number one right here to control the volume. So we'll go to master and let's find the volume, master volume right there. And then now, whenever I adjust this, you can see it is moving that part on the piano. Then I could double click on this to rename it. Let's say the volume. We could just shorten that up. Then now I know that this controls volume on my piano. So this can get super interesting, especially once you start applying one knob to multiple different things. So I could even route up like this reverb on the synth as well. Let's maybe grab that reverb, control number one, the volume control to control the dry wet value. And then let's listen to how this sounds. So now the dry wet of my synthesizer is being controlled by that one knob as well. And the volume of my piano is also being controlled. So there's a lot of really crazy stuff you can start to do once you start mapping these different parameters. So it's something that could be really fun and more advanced production scenarios. Now, the cool thing is the combinators are recently updated. So there's a lot of additional mapping features available. So if we go ahead and go to this new configuration setting that was just recently added, we have a lot of different customization options for this front panel. So no longer is it just these four knobs and four buttons. There's actually a lot of cool customization options available. So let's say, for example, I wanted to take this switch here and I wanted to change the look of this switch. Right now you can see the type settings are set to switch. I can change this, maybe a flat red button. I have all these different customization options. This looks like a button from an 808 drum machine. I could take something like this. I could even change the color of the combinators as well now. So I can go and change it to red. I can make it bigger. Maybe make it four units large, so it's a bit larger. I can click on this window here, drag and drop that button, maybe put it over here, change the text color to white. So you got a bunch of different cool options for just customizing the look and feel of everything. And you can also add in additional parameters as well. So let's say we wanted to add in some additional switches. I can click on this, add a new switch, change the look and feel of that switch. Maybe put that switch over here and hit exit and then I can go ahead and turn off and on that switch, or I can go through and map that to something within my software. There's a lot of cool customization options now available on the combinators that could be used for creating really advanced presets. So you could literally go through and map tons of different parameters on all these different layered synths and map them to simple, easy to use switches and knobs and everything. And you can create some really cool presets. So combinators have some more practical uses just for kind of organizing a session, or you can use them for very advanced production situations and everything in between. So they're a super helpful device that you'll use whenever you're working on your tracks.